Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We welcome you inside Mimico Arena for your Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. Game of the week, our second of the week tonight. It's the second game of the Crombie Cup, the Toronto Beaches and the Mimico Mountaineers. I'm Matthew Kerrigan with the JBI Sports Network. Joined once again by Jonathan Donville made his debut on Wednesday night and I guess must have done okay because they invited you back. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, great to be here. Friday night, Drummond Street Bowl. Should be a great game. I found out before game you've never had a P meal here. Never had a P meal. I've only this is the first time I've been here not played in the game, so yeah, okay. The, fair the, fair uh, enough. We'll we'll allow it this one time. The pregame P meal as a player is a tough move, but <laughs> I guess I should probably try to film it or something now when I have my first Well, there, there you go. Early movement called there against the Beaches, who are wearing their navy blue with yellow numbers, and they'll work right to left. Excuse me, away from Will Johnson in this first period. Two teams coming in with 10 wins. Good enough for second, and Dudamain picks up where he left off on Wednesday. Scoring four goals then, he's got an early one here now. Yeah, great job by Mimico there, starting the game on time. They came right out, got the face off, went right at him. You saw Thompson gets a nice pick. They get a good look kind of right away, and then get a reset, second possession, something we talked about uh, on Wednesday, and then uh, just a nice feed from Thompson and a quick release by Dudeman. You know, he was a name we talked about a lot uh, when we broadcast on Wednesday, and off to another good start today. So Dudamain, the first opening goal here. Assist to Finley Thompson showing here on game sheet. Also showing on games, game sheet, the other 10 win team, Whitby, facing Oakville at 11 and three. And Whitby up big, five nothing already in the first period in that game. I think they were a seven o'clock start. Watch out for a set piece here from Beaches. They work it over the top to Willem Firth, the second overall scorer coming into today. Adam Poitras in that game has four goals and five points. So that may not be the case anymore. Dudamain again, this time over the shoulder. Bounces it just wide of Johnston. Straight to the beaches and they work down floor and score quickly. Big save leads to goals, right? How, how many times have we said that in, in this game, right? And especially, I think, a, a very nice play by, by number nine here, Matt Anchone. He's a, he gets ahead of the ball, sets a nice pick in transition, kind of takes a guy through the middle and lets, lets his man behind him set up and make the play. I thought the ball carrier could have shot it, but nice pass and then a nice finish there uh, for Beaches. David Anderson getting credited with the goal as Anderson has had quite the hot hand wearing a different number tonight. Missing a few numbers on our sheet and of course the two that connect on the first yeah. pitch's goal are, are two of them. Mimico working in again. Hard hit in the corner, knocked the ball carrier down. Dudamain has it back on the near side. Dudamain trying to find Waters cutting through towards the net and bounced away from him for Bakta. Return shot, Taskinet, and Johnson will make a save. Two really good looks there for Mimico. Waters is wide open, just couldn't get the ball there and then kind of playing through the possession. Bit of an unsettled situation. Great back cut there by Taskinet. Gets a good look. Big high step here from Jackson Raposo. Up at center. Taking the floor, the last one on is Jacob Hickey. He's got it now, tries the quick stick. And into the feet of Lane Hershka, who will make the low save. Willem first staying on to play defense against Cordingly. Now those two head off as Justin Lee shot bounces off the end boards. Good luck by Lee there, but I think right their team might have had a tap in on the back pipe. Look out, Gary, our camera guy, nearly ended up with a souvenir. He's right close to the action, right next to the Toronto Beaches bench. Our thanks to Mimico and Mark Grimes for helping get this arena set up. 
as well for us to stream here. I know they did a lot of work behind the scenes as have a couple other arenas throughout the OJLL. Bouncer off the post from our vantage point. That took a funny hop in front of the benches. I'm surprised it wasn't called down as if someone had touched it. Reed yeah. Kurtz though beats the double team in the corner and gains possession. The trailer, the shot, and Liam Ferris will score. That's a huge, huge hustle play by Kurtz. You know, great play to pick up the ground ball, but just the hustle to get there takes on two defenders or two guys. It's a one on two, clear one on two, picks it up, gets out of traffic, gets his hands free. Nice pass to Ferris, who heads up play, gets down the floor, and a nice little twister finish there to finish it off. But Kurtz really making that play happen. Three and 20 gone in the period, and clock hasn't actually started here off the faceoff, so. Beach is getting an extended possession. Three officials, Mark Thompson, Mark Sands, Simon D'Souza here tonight as they signal reset. Beach's offense come out with some good looks here. They're playing really nice offense, getting over the top a lot, setting hard picks, and you're, they're getting their hands free. And they'll start to go, here's another one. Matt Collison, his shot, there was a moving screen on the far side. I believe that might have been Hickey that took down Brody Kaskinet. That's one, if you're, if you're Beaches and you're the Beaches coaching staff, you don't mind that. Hard pick early in the game. You know, you lose possession, Oof. but it's a great look. A pair of Mimico players collide with each other. There is Finley Thompson will now get the ball back outside. Thompson up top, no room to shoot, so passes down to Lee. One-handed, nearly gets a second chance. But that one hand on the stick couldn't bring it down safely. So Johnson nicely done. How do you do? A little behind the back with the goalie stick. Well, settle in, folks, because the clock's still stuck at 16.41. So, could be here a while. <laughs> I don't think anyone's realized yet. There we go. Yeah, no, there no, we no. go, there we go. Three lacrosse. Got, got the game on down in the, in the uh, penalty box, I guess. 2-1, the important part, however, as Mimico jumped out early. Waters shot looking five hole there on Johnston. Yeah, Waters got away with a bit of a ward there. <laughs> kind of a forearm shiver there with the one hand on his stick. Got to get Waters a team issued bucket as well. Down floor, Beach's score. Yeah, pretty similar here to the first one. Kind of an unsettled transition situation. Get guys, get guys setting picks, taking guys through, and then they can kind of loop back over and another, uh, another nice cross floor pass. I think we're still trying to figure out some of the numbers here. I might, didn't catch who scored that one. Alex Gaston credited with it. We've got 66 on our board, but wearing six. Assist from Collison and Taylor Dooley as they show up on the game sheet. Here's Cordingly. Cross floor for Carson Moyer. He's shot through traffic, and Justin Lee was checked through the crease, got contact with Johnston, and Mimico going to end up with the ball here. We look for Justin Tavares wearing the uh, uh, that's a tough, White jersey. That's a tough turnover for Mimico. You earn yourself a reset, get the ball back, and then turn it over right away. Those are the ones that, that make coaches furious. Willem Firth. Back to the far side, skew that shot, and Krushka will hang on to it. Yeah, Firth certainly one to watch tonight. I believe he's got 75 points in just 14 games coming into this game, so playing at over a 100-point pace on the year. And, and he'll be the focus for Mimico all night, but, you know, guys who can score at that level are hard to stop. Coming off a nine-point effort in their most recent yeah, is that good? game for the Beaches. I think that's okay. That's more than I scored my entire career. Here's Waters from outside. Puts it in on Johnson and he'll tap it right to his man on the crease. 
Nice little foot pass there from Carson Moore getting it back. That was a good look for Mimico. Five minutes gone here showing in-house. Tied to a piece as this ball bounces through the crease of Hushka. Directing traffic and clearing the crease for the four count. Now got to get over center for the eight and Finley Thompson will not. Great hustle play there by the Beaches. Brock Haley leading all points getters with 79. He scored a goal tonight in Whitby. So he's up to 80 in, I believe he's played 13 games. Brock Haley as his bouncer comes in from Jacob Hickey. Hickey will get his own rebound and now send it to Jeremy Phoenix LeFave. Coming out of a Quebec lacrosse hub that's been making great strides over the past five years or so. Zach Miller down in the corner. Spinning shot there from Gaston. Curtis Buckta bringing it in. Now for Dudamain. Got the first goal from Mimico in the opening minute. Dudamain will draw the double team as the bouncer down for Buckta has Thompson all alone on the doorstep. How many moves was that? But Johnston goes with all of them. Yeah, really nice job by Will Johnston there in the goal, just not really falling for any of those moves. They're kind of staying big. Didn't give any room for that twister to get back. Meanwhile, back the other way, Matthew Collison's shot bounces into the corner where accordingly will pick up. Lost possession there momentarily. Aaron Taguri now back over Cameron Accioni. Coming up on the eight second there, Mimico has no choice. They just have to kind of ice it, get back here and play a defensive set. Tired defense here, so good opportunity for Beaches to start wearing him down, get a good look on his possession. That's two half court violations in the last three possessions for Mimico. Beach is back over the top. Johnston making like he's going because we've got a delayed penalty and it'll be a hold. Coming up to Mimico, the first penalty of the game coming seven and a half minutes in. Yeah, again, we'll see what we'll see what Beaches kind of draws up here, but you'd think it'd have, have to involve 14 Firth here. He's running the point, either him looking to feed or looking to shoot, but probably going through 14 here. It's accordingly off for holding as Anderson sets up, and was that first up top? Yeah, not really running a play here, just kind of choosing to just play it out, step into it. First, Harry took one shot, got the ball back, and then just a nice kind of underhand three-quarter release brings it back to the short side pipe right over the hit, right over the, uh, the leg pad, rather, of Hrushka. And that's just a great shot. That's a goal scorer's goal. First time on the board for Firth. And first to lead of the game for the Beaches who are up 3-2. Remember, this is a two-game point total affair. Mimico won the first one, 14-12. We're, we're eight minutes into the game now. I'm not sure. Krabby Cup. I'm not sure, sorry, how many shots Firth had uh, before that power play, but clearly coming out of that power play, sensing, you know, it's time for me to get myself going here. Here's Matthew Collison through the middle. Gaston will get there. Long shot bounces in on Hershka. He gets it into that big wooden goalie stick. Back to those after one season of the Winter Soup Spoons. Last year at the mini tournament at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. Moyer up top looking for Kaskinet. We'll push it in the corner. Judamain got their first ball, still bouncing though. And it will be the Beaches that run it out. Zach Miller off the bench. Miller for Firth in the corner, Hickey. 
Hickey stutter stepping. Firth wants it up top. They'll go all the way back up to Gaston, though. Under 10 on the shot clock as Hickey puts it far side. Down for Firth. Cuts to the net, and Hrushka makes the save. Nice pump fake there by Firth. I thought he was shooting that thing for sure. Jacob Garcia, the trade acquisition from the Brampton Excelsiors, joining this Mimico team. I didn't think those two teams were allowed to trade with each other, but... <laughs> Times have changed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Out in front, oh, they are gonna call that a goal down here. We're basically right on the goal line. And we'll take another look. I think it, it, it hit the match for sure it went in, but that was, okay. that was kind of right on the line. If we're going by the blue, the light blue line on where the net is, Okay, yeah, in, into the back and, and back to where it sat, where I saw it. Nice job by Buckter there, kind of trying to reach out his hands, get his stick away, get as much angle as he can, and squeaks it far side. And as you just saw in the replay, he's just barely got it far enough to go in. But a nice finish. Mimico called for interference. They're on the goal. As we're tied at three, nearing the halfway mark of this first period, but not getting there very quickly. <laughs> Moving screen there. We'll give the ball back to the Beaches, and they score early Hickey. Yeah, just a classic pick and roll here. Just had a good hard pick. Kind of roll over the top. Roll man gets the goal and a nice finish. Goaltenders will take the opportunity to grab a drink here after this goal and you called it. The pick and roll there between Collison and Hickey. Reminder to follow us, subscribe here, excuse me, to the YouTube channel. If you turn your notifications on and like the video, you'll get more videos like this to show up in your feed and you won't miss any of our Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Games of the Week, Games of the Weeks. Not sure what which one of those is correct, so we'll cover <laughs> all the bases as we take you all the way through the playoffs, which are upcoming, by the way. We're about... Only three weeks away from the playoffs here in Junior A here in Ontario and all the way to the Minto Cup, which will be played at the CAA Center at the end of August in Brampton. Yeah, and unlike some years, there's not one team running away with the standings. There's a huge log jam. Four or five teams all within a couple points of each other. So not long left in terms of time, but a lot to sort out in terms of standings. Well, and a log jam near the bottom as well. I believe right. it's top eight and Orangeville with only a two-game cushion now sitting in that eighth spot. And if you can believe I just said Orangeville Northman on the verge of perhaps not making the postseason here. Aiden McDonnell. Of course, the three teams below them struggling mightily this year with Brampton. Six Nations and how about KW picking up their first win of the season last year. First win since mid-June 2019 wow. for that franchise who went winless in the mini tournament last season. Coming off the bench is Jacob Hickey. Will pass into the corner. Looks off Zach Miller. Now will go there first back into the corner again. Collison. Shot here from Gaston. Ended Much up in the crease of Hrushka and I believe so did a Beaches player. Not sure if that deflected or if it was just a kind of a misdirection release there by the Beaches shooter, but Hrushka kind of leaned in the opposite way and just got a piece of that with his shoulder. Justin Lee up top here for Finley Thompson. Thompson, the no look to a cutting due to Main, and it just rolled off his stick. The three Beaches players just flying up the floor here. They clearly want to run. Matthew Accioni on the run and into the end boards after scoring an end-to-end -end goal. 
Yeah, Achiodin was flying out the floor as soon as this ball got turned over. As soon as he knew that they were getting the ball, he was just flying up the floor. Gets a nice pass from the goaltender, Johnson. And then he, he's still not really open here. It makes a nice little hesitation move. And then a nice finish on the goal. Not quite the Teddy Jenner celebration at the end, but <laughs> we'll give it to him. For the goal that makes it 4-3. Sorry, it's just gone up 5-3, that's correct. Here for the Beaches. And they're running again as that shot in on Hershka. Bounces right back to Mimico, however. And Tavares. With it, far side, Thompson, no shot. So he goes back to Bryce Cordingly and it bounced off his shoulder and in on Johnson. You can hear the Beaches coaching staff yelling pressure, and it's clear that they want to, in all phases, they really want to turn up the pressure. They want to get out and run, and then you'll notice when they're coming back on defense, picking up at basically the midline every, every possession, making Mimico earn their clears and then making them earn their offensive opportunities and killing a lot of shot clock off in the process. Way late here as Firth picks it up in the corner. Had to release that one from a bad angle, and it goes well wide of the net for the 32nd violation. Up for Garcia on the run. No look, quick stick, Moyer, they score. Well, there's two sides to the coin, obviously, right? Trying to pressure up the floor, they end up getting guys behind them. And a nice look across here from Garcia and a really quick finish by Moore. The sneaky little no-look feed from Garcia, that was, that was pretty. Back-to-back -back goalie assists. Those, those are hard to finish, too, by Moore, because you got to have your feet set before the ball comes to get enough power on it. So good read by him, knowing he had an opportunity on the back pipe, getting his feet set and getting that thing out. And again, just kind of like the last one, barely goes in. So every, every step there counted. And it pays off for him. 5-4 now. Firth. Bouncing around outside. Back across the crease, and Hushka can't get there in time. That's really pretty offense by Beaches. Offensive coaches are always talking about swinging the floor, switching sides, making, making the defense turn, and how many times they do it. They do it three times, and you know, to three seconds basically. Cross floor pass, cross floor pass, goal. Really hard to defend. Your head spinning as a defender, you don't know where the ball is. And then kind of exactly what I said about Moyer on the second goal, same thing by Firth there. Gets his feet set the, before the ball comes. Allows him to get it off right away with a lot of power. I think that's now three or four of the goals by Beaches coming off those kind of cross, field, cross floor passes. Not sure if that was a, a and emphasis for this game or just you know, good offense by them. And Beach is back to work again. Seems like every time they've scored, they've had the ball back and they put another one in behind Hrushka. Same, same story here, cross floor pass, cross floor pass. Cross floor pass, goal. Just really simple, fundamental offense by Butchers. Pass and cut, pass and cut, pass and cut. Ball switches, goalie gets you know discombobulated a little bit, and, and he scores. This is three goals now within a minute after. Yeah, we're getting a goalie change a here. A 22. Yeah, three goals in a minute. The first one coming from Mimico is David Anderson. The latest one in Owen Dew. Previous two games in this building, Dew got the start and got pulled. And now Hrushka gets the start and he gets pulled. And it was interesting, last time we were here was about 20 minutes before game time and they didn't know who the starter was. The goaltenders didn't. I don't know if the team did, but just kind of an interesting strategy. And here's Mimico straight back to the cage though. Yeah, nice feed by, I believe by Dudevan here. 
Good play off the faceoff by Ferris. Gets the ball right up. Again, pressure kind of backfires here if you can slip behind him. And then you can see Johnston, the Beaches goaltender, was thinking shot all the way here. He did not think that thing was going to the back pipe. Great job, Duneman, kind of freeze him with his eyes and shoulders. And then a slick feed to the back pipe and a nice finish. Yeah, why not look to Duneman to shoot that after what he did on Wednesday and right. already got going here in this game. Going back to the goaltenders for a sec, too. Coming into this game, uh, Hrushka started eight games and Dew started six. So that's the benefit for Mimico is, you know, going to a change, but they're very confident in Dew. He's played a lot for them. Moyer's so the switch should be too big of a deal for them. Moyer's shot hits hard off Johnson, and now Waters, I believe trying to flip that to Moyer will get it out and over center. But running into it is Jeremy Phoenix LeFave. And it's funny because we talked to a lot of coaches before the season started and Oakville was the one that really told us with Aiden Walsh and Sam Haynes that they were confident in their 1A, 1B, if you will. But I know Mimico also was here in Hrushka and Dewan. We'll see both here. of them tonight. Beach has run that play a couple of times now where the ball swings behind the goal and then they'll bring a lefty all the way across the floor. I think they did the first time for Firth. That time looked like it was for Collison, just trying to catch the defense sleeping. Addie Dwyer simply ran through pressure right there, right yeah. at center to beat the eight count as we hit the final five minutes here in this period. Bouncy ball, Lee, it goes off the back of Johnston and in. Justin Lee's an impressive player. It's rare you see it. A young man that big with hands like that and yeah he's had a tough start to this game seems like he got smoked three or four times early but going to the middle going through the middle finally pays off for him and a nice finish gets the uh, the hometown bounce there as they say <laughs> Hudson Thompson oh he got taken hard into the boards in front of the Toronto bench looking for that loose ball. Thompson straight back after it, though, in a stick battle with Andrew Dalton. And the quick shot for the Beaches before anyone could get set, and they're rolling here. Yeah, two former high school teammates uh, connecting here for the goal. Both played at St. Michael's, and Andy Dalton just a great play on the... Looks like he was going to lose it, comes out with it. Goes on a two-on-one and wow, a one-handed, a one-handed little flip pass, and then Raposo just shoots right off the screen, goes piping in. What a play there from Dalton. Dalton coming over from Kitchener Waterloo at the trade deadline. Plays his college ball at Cornell. Plus I know obviously very well. <laughs> You know, see Mike's very well, if I'm not mistaken, as well, so. Yes, sir. Waters from the outside. Waters going to take a low shot, and that went straight through. Accioni on its way to Johnson, and Accioni a nice recovery off the glass. But his long pass is intercepted here. Mark Moyer, excuse me, trying to regain his footing at center, fakes the flip to Bukta, and will go to Dudamain for real. Thompson in the corner. Finley Thompson over the top. And the shot in on Johnston saved. And Beaches have a player down floor. It's Accioni. That was good offense here by Mimico. A bunch of quick passes right in a row. Got their best player coming over a pick. With his hands feet right around the dotted line. That's a shot they'll take every time. Finley Thompson was wide open in behind the play. And back the other way is Tavares who rings it off the post. Collision here, and the arms go high from the refs. Mimico and he had called for a hook here. And yeah, nobody picked up Tavares there, just kind of ran right out of the box. Didn't get picked up, ran right in on the goal. Beat the goalie, but couldn't beat the pipe. It's been about three years since I've seen a hooking call, and now I've seen two, two in back-to-back -back games. First power play, again, we didn't see Beaches really run any plays, any set pieces. Wonder if they'll, they'll keep it, just kind of want to play and get the ball moving, or if we'll see a set piece here. Sykes not going to let that happen early on as the 
Ball comes back up top, and the low shot sails high off the end glass from Willem Firth and goes all the way down floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark Thompson was yelling corner, and Carson Moyer trying to sell that he should have got the quick restart right in front of the crease. Yeah, he wanted the free breakaway. Accordingly, out of the corner, big head fake. We'll take it outside. Uh, Mimicol just looked to kill this penalty off here. Oh, well, not. you would think so. As Cascanet, a couple times off the end boards, it bounces right back to Dudamain. And there's going to be a slash called here on the beaches. A little bit of four on four lacrosse here coming up. Got a minute 20 of four on four here. The one off the shoulder, maybe, the start. Mimico came in with 161 goals scored on their season through their 12 games. 70 of those came on special teams. As Moyer puts it in four on four, and you can add another one to the total. Yeah, it honestly didn't look like Moyer had any angle here. He must have seen something that we couldn't from our angle, but just a real nice finish here. Yeah, gets gets uh, gets Johnson to kind of open up a little bit, and jams a five hole, but you know, you can tell by the look on Johnson's face, that's one he probably wants back. So Moyer's second of the game, coming four on four. It's at eight seven, and we're still got two minutes in the first period. Yeah, well, we had some, we had some free uh, injury time added, I <laughs> guess. <laughs> I can always tell, based on whoever's running our scoreboard, how animated they're getting, sitting doing their job. As tonight, Kennedy died at the controls. Firth into the corner, popping back up top. Was Hickey, he'll go down to Firth again. Sykes right there on him, and the pick comes from Hickey, and it opens it up for Firth to run and shoot and score. This pizza's offense is really impressive to watch. You're really well coached. It's just the ball moves. It keeps moving. It keeps moving. And players do such a good job of getting rid of the ball and then cutting and getting through the middle. And Firth had a couple times touched the ball early in the possession, got rid of it, cut through, got rid of it, cut through. And then kind of a simple, you know, down screen here. Comes over, he gets over to his left side, his kind of non-traditional side. And instead of trying to twist it back, he just keeps it out and goes short side with it. And, and it's an awkward play there for Kurtz because you could see he was defending the pick and roll and Firth just went the other side of the floor and too much room for that shot to go through as Firth has a pair already in this game. Riley O'Connor, the new head coach of the Toronto Beaches. If you're wondering why their offense is so good. Yeah, I talked to him before the game. He, he's he's ple pretty pleased with his team so far and like we said, just kind of reiterate that there's a log jam, you know, in the standings, and it's it's really anyone's game. Luke Magnan and Damon Edwards on the bench as the assistant, so well-coached defense here for the Beaches as well. Brief power play here for Mimico. Here's Dudamain. Up top for Lee, he'll go back to Dudamain, who takes a number of chops, Lee through traffic and the shot off the shoulder of Johnston Lee will pick up the rebound over in the corner. Waters wants it, but no way for Lee to get it there. So he goes to Finley Thompson up top instead. Thompson fakes it around the back for Lee the shot and Johnson saves. Waters will extend the possession, however. Under 30 to play. Waters cutting through Lee scores. Great cut here by Lee, goes right through the middle. He had a couple good looks on that power play, goes right through the middle, catches it, quick release, bangs it home. And a few words for the, uh, for the Beaches defender afterwards, too. I think he was asking him how his day was going. <laughs> So 
16 seconds left in Mimico winning the possession. I don't know if I've ever seen this many goals in the first period of a junior A game. I, I can't think when it would have been. Well, the clock stopped with 16.1 and then ran a few extra ticks. So they'll discuss, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough. Can't get enough lacrosse tonight, Mimico. <laughs> we'll sell you the whole seat. You'll only need the edge. Yeah. Well, there you go. If you sit in those seats long enough, it's it's a painful experience. Oh yeah. I know. <laughs> I know you spend a lot of time on your on the bench, but at JVI Video and at the OJLL are the social media channels you need to be following throughout this Junior A season as the JVI Sports Network presents. Ontario Lacrosse League Junior A Game of the Week. Powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Our thanks to them as well in their Milk Up campaign. Uh, yeah, we've got a full 15 now on the clock. I think they're trying to put it back to 15 seconds. And it'll start with Justin Lee and it will start with Rushka on the bench. And then we'll take this thing down in probably six or seven seconds, then run whatever they drew up at the end. Well, this is seven right now, and here they go with Dudemain. Dudemain over the top, looks and shoots and scores! 2.8 left on the board, that will count. Nice play design here from Coach Dean George. Just to kind of a simple screen. I thought he was gonna pass it. Yeah, I think he had Sykes open behind him. But a, a pretty nice twister there from Dudeman right in the middle of the floor. If you've got your hands free, it's a great spot to shoot from. And he twists it into the bottom, uh, bottom right corner. Man, they'll just, well, I was gonna say they're just gonna muck the draw, but Aiden McDonnell with other other ideas as what a first period. 9-9 nine, nine after one here in game number two of the Crombie Cup. Yeah, just nonstop action and a lot of really nice goals too. Not just garbage goals, but really, really nice goals and great ball movement so far. It's been a great, great one to watch. Well, imagine what's going to happen in the second when they switch sides and uh, you have that fast break uh, off the offensive door. As we said, this is the Crombie Cup, which last year was won by Mimico Mountaineers. And it was their fourth win in five tries, winning in 16, 17, and 18. And we're happy to show you highlights of what happened over that two-game affair last year. Pushed in the boards, trying to work the two-man game on the sideboards. Stick down here, it's an offensive one for Mimico as they try to set up it again, very late in the shot clock with five seconds left. And from long range, a low one gets past the arm of Brown as Devin Pfeiffer will break the ice. And Mimico back to the attack. McCombie in the corner, Hag. McCombie diving, can he stay out? Yes, he did. What a beauty to make it 2-0. As here's Cormier. In behind the net to McCombie, a cutter. And what a play. Cormier in behind the net to Finley Thompson. Finds his man cutting and now make it 3-1 here in favor of Mimico. McCombie over to the far side and again, Tight defense, maybe too tight as the ref's arm goes up. And McCombie into the corner. Corbier the shot, hits off the leg of Brown and goes in on the delayed penalty call. Another loose ball picked up by their defense though and up over center, it's gonna turn into a three on one, ducking out of the way and taking it himself and scoring is Mike McCannell. Mimico leads nine to one, nothing in terms of offense so far here in the third period. The five minutes and a bit that we've passed already. 
This is a power play for Mimico on that five minute major, but a hard shot arriving on scene. Sam first, the first goal since about the nine minute mark of the first period. Now Kiernan. Mascioni the shot, excuse me, that's Taggart Clark on the far side. Better credit it right because it's in behind Dew. Matthew Sykes has no intention of taking this anywhere near the cage. And as I say that, he passes down. Oh, and another one from Butka. Second pretty goal of the game. Handshakes are started for the Mimical Mountaineers who defeat the Toronto Beaches 11 to three here in the opening match of the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League season. Matty Duncan will give way. Jacob, been all over this carpet here early on. Good pass. It's the cutter. Good swerving D to close that middle up. Kick it back to the top. Wide open bounce shot. Steer to side. Shannon, big save. Fake, fake, and they tuck one in. So a beauty job by Brady Kernan to follow up on the play. And he has given the Beaches a 1-0 lead. Start at the top. Kick it over right side. Big overhand wide of the mark. Karen played, and Beaches now in transition. Owen Grant. Grant in alone. Fake, fake, tries to go low and finds a five hole. So Owen Grant with a shorthanded marker has given his team now a 3 nothing lead. Kick it back out, swinging around to the left, looking down low. Tough pass to handle, can't. And the Beaches now will almost corral it. No reset, 10 on the shot clock. Quick shot, far corner. So the Mountaineers are on the board for the first time. And it's Peyton Cormier that gets it done. Big overhand there and a good save made. As Owen Dew has come in net and a beauty finish there. So the Mountaineers with a little bit of life. Good discipline though by Zach Young not to pick up a check in from behind. 10.45 to go and the Beaches regain that that lead with a good finish there from David Anderson. Swing around, left side. Gonna duck in, get a shot off, bumps it back out. Working behind you, that quick feed and a good finish there. So outstanding work, it's Cameron Atchum. Not easily, not, that was a bit of a struggle as they get it back, that shot wide. Just under five minutes to go here in the third. That's going to be a violation, and Beach is going to pick it up. Good speed. Taking it in and tucking it in the corner. Beauty job by Atchinone for his third of the game. More importantly, it's 9-5 Beach. As the clock will wind its way down. And they will pick up the win. A 9-6 final in favor of the Beaches.
Your Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week is brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.org, a partnership now in its second season. As we thank the Dairy Farmers of Ontario for their support. A crazy, wild period, if you believe the score sheet three Mimico runners did not have points in that period yeah th those must have been interesting locker rooms at after one because <laughs> the offensive coach is saying don't change a darn thing and the defensive coach is saying figure it out here <laughs> we need some stops watch for a set piece I think beaches like to run a set piece off the uh, off the intermission cross floor to first and why not Yeah, we were, we were chatting uh, you know, during the intermission, but Firth kind of quietly produces these points. And you now just another one, another kind of, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but another cross floor pass, quick release, go for the goalie, gets set, and the kid knows how to find the back of the net. Well, no question about that this season, anyways, is. How about 10 on the board for the Beaches? That's disgusting. That's his fourth. Yeah, so he's got four goals and five points, and we got 39 more minutes, 39 and a little bit extra more minutes of lacrosse to play here. Setting up for another big night. As they work to the far side of the floor and shot in on Owen Dew, who came on in relief of Lane Hirschkin in that first period. Owen Dew, I think, could hear us from his uh, his spot in the goal. He said, all right, enough's enough here. <laughs> Ryan, a sense of bringing it up over center, and he's one of those players that does not have a point, along with Addie Dwyer and Justin Tavares. Again, yeah, Mimico plays a fairly unique style here in the second period where basically all of their players will play offense and defense. You notice Sykes, number 22, out there on defense right now. You'll see Finley Thompson, Lee, all of their, basically all of their offensive players get back and playing defense. And Car and Carson, Carson Moyer. Moyer, yeah, and this is what, exactly what they want to do. Moyer taking off, trying to catch up. Was Dylan Robinson, that mystery number 91 player. You're sacrificing a little bit of defense, trying to get some, some easy offensive looks. And that was a good opportunity there for Moyer. Well, easy offensive looks. With nine on the board for Mimico after that first period. Here's Dew. I hope you took the over before this one. That's all <laughs> I got to say. Bounces into Dew up for Garcia. And jumping the route there was, excuse me, Taylor Dooley, who goes over and back. That's a big play by Mimico to get the ball back there because their defenders were going to come back on their third defensive set. They really needed an offensive shift here. Here's Thompson. Nifty feed in through the middle to Cascanet. Excuse me, that's Reed Kurtz. The no, it's not. It's Justin Sykes. Goodness. I saw a seven, and then I saw 77, then I saw 27. But as you said, Sykes... Wearing the captain C this year will play both ends of the floor here in this second period. He'll go for Buxa. Now for Thompson. Around Kaskinet. Shot oh, goes through and Johnson the save. Sorry. We had a good angle on that one. That one looked like it was it was labeled for the, the far pipe. Thompson will posture up here on the ball carrier. Calling for it is first in the corner and quickly Waters stepped up into the Passing lane. Now a screen allows Firth to pass to the corner. Asenza hard on his man. Hickey. For Firth, quick stick. Where is it? Do falls over top and it's underneath the pads. Nice save there by Do. Seen more than a couple of those tonight go in. You can see the last minute adjustment too, just as that ball changed direction off the initial save. Great vantage point for this end, anyways, down here in yeah. the corner. As that shot from Tavares goes in on Johnson. 
Fires hard after the loose ball. Dudamate in there as well for Mimico. Bailey Kerwin tries to dig it out for the Beaches and can't do it. All the way back up top for Moyer. Tons of room to load up that shot and fired it off the end boards. Ball stays on the correct side of center and Lee one hands it. Over to the near side here for Cordingly. And Tavares. Delayed penalty. Dews taken off to the bench as they pass back here for Tavares. Ball was bouncing on the far side and we'll get the slashing call here against the Beaches and the league's best power play with 47 goals coming into the game. We'll go to work. Yeah, we saw them on Wednesday night. They got a lot of different looks that they can go off here. They'll pick they'll pick for, for Finley Thompson going either way, backing up to his left or, or kind of coming into it, moving to his right and throwing a bit of a twister. They'll cut him through, have him pick a bunch of different places. So, And a number of different players as well. Sykes not on the floor. We saw him quarterback a couple of times on Wednesday. Of course, he was just out there for a back and forth shift. Quickly to the quick stick for Bakta and a collision. Far side, Dudamain got into Dooley and Dooley took exception with a couple slashes. Thompson taking top spot again. Finley Thompson behind the back. Lee was looking for that far corner and it was there too, but shot just goes wide as Dudamain gets tripped up. Mimico Bench wanted a penalty. Now they're get one as Dudamain was hit on the ground. And Lee's shot hung on to by Johnston. And Mimico will go up five on three here for a minute and 21. Yeah, nice job working the ball around there uh, from Mimico. A bunch of good looks, a couple of resets. And they earned themselves a, a five on three here. A little bit surprised to see them actually playing the five on three and not just leaving a guy at the at the center line as you'll see a lot of teams do. But Emily Thompson is shot from long range. That's handled by Johnson and Mimico. I guess it didn't hit the official, or excuse me, the goaltender is the official there to signal not over and back in the shot clock, didn't reset either. Now it does as Lee gets a second chance and Johnson will save that off the glass. Thompson, shots there, takes it. And it bounces to Dudamain and another 30 seconds here is Dudamain's shot handled by Johnson, but not a lot of movement there for Mimico and all one and done. Yeah, the shots are open, but I'm with you. I would have expected Mimico. We're having more clock issues here. Oh, and B just catches a break, gets some tired guys off the floor. Yeah. Only put two out there right now, though, is... No, there is a third. He was hiding next to the net. Here's Thompson. Oh, the double quick stick on the crease. Nearly caught Johnston, but the return pass shot wide. 14 seconds here in the first penalty, and Beaches can kill that off as they yeah, what a, slow it down. What a kill so far by, by Beaches, but especially by Johnston. They're kind of just holding their spots, giving up the outside shots. And he's been up to every task. And then, you know, when there has been a cross, a cross crease pass, he's been right there to sh shut the door. 30 seconds of traditional power play time now for the Mountaineers as Sykes will start it into the righties. And then Bakta playing catch. Sykes long pass. Shot rather off the end boards. Dudamain gets it back. Cross crease was looking in the corner there for, I believe that was Lee. And now Sykes cutting through. Quick shot as the ball arrived. Dudamain couldn't pick it up cleanly. That's a big kill by Beaches. Dudamain for Thompson. That shot just as the door opens. Sykes faked the shot the entire way and gets down to Finley Thompson in an unusual spot on the crease. You can feel that coming. There's just too many looks. Too many open shots there. One of those was going to go in. And a Sykes was wide open here to shoot it. I thought he was going to shoot it, I think, 
Johnson in the cage might have thought the same thing. Comes around due to main screen, is wide open, but a really heads up play to the back door and a free goal there for Finn Thompson. Not only does he sell the shot, but the, it's the same look that was there the entire five on three with that open look that they took the entire time. Yeah. And again, Finley Thompson, normally the top guy, you don't expect him on the crease. Just so much deception in that play. Yeah. That Mimico will capitalize to tie this game at 10. First. Working to the outside. Reed Kurtz will push his man away. First gets it back. No shot there is Hudson Thompson in the lane. Shot does come from the far side of David Anderson. It's amazing how, for a guy who scores so much and is having a huge night, how quickly Firth gets the ball out of his stick. It's never in there for more than, you know, one, two, three seconds. And he does a great job of getting back to his spot. He wants to kind of operate from that lefty, or from that the kind of the half wall area. He does a great job of giving it up and getting back to his spot and attacking again. Here come the Beaches in transition, the low shot. Scooped out by Dew, but nearly put it right into the stick of Cameron Accioni, who then got a piece of Owen Dew. Another penalty coming up here to the Beaches. We get, we get an over and back, and everybody's hollering that that hit yeah. Will Johnson, which it definitely did. Yeah, it's too bad for Mimico there. They, they probably should have gotten the opportunity to run a six on five play. I like the aggressiveness there from Sykes, though. It was a two on two. A lot of guys probably would have pulled that out, but he just, you could see he was going the whole way and realizing how big and strong he is, just went right at his defender. Well, we got a sec. We'll shout out Pat Gregoire. I see you in the chat. And Jonathan appreciates the <laughs> vote of confidence, but a congratulations, Pat Gregoire, who has done work with us here at the JBI Sports Network on his Tom Pirelli Award nomination, along with Tyson Geick of the Halifax Thunderbirds and Jake Elliott as well. For the record, I've had a female sandwich before. It's not at Mimico Arena. Well, to set the record well then you haven't had a female sandwich. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. Shot from Philly Thompson. <laughs> Just bounced around right at Johnston and somehow finds the back of the net. Two goals in nearly as many minutes for Thompson. Just kind of backs up, backs up. It's one of those plays I was talking about where they set him and he kind of back up to his left. Nice little toe drag. And then Johnson clearly thought he was going far side, kind of sold it far side and ripped it back to the near pipe. Thompson completes the hat trick here on the power play. There's a tie up over there by the Mimico bench. Everyone goes their separate ways as Toronto comes away at the ball. We're getting a too many men call here against the beaches. Coach O'Connor is not happy about that one. I thought it was coming to Mimico. I don't know if we can. Again, that's a new rule this year, too, where in uh, past junior race seasons, that would have just been a turnover. Yeah, possession call. But now it's because it doesn't matter whether you have the ball or don't. If it's too many men, it's a penalty in all situations. Well, no, it does look like it's. Going to the beaches here. Yeah, and this power play is going right back to work. You wonder if they go back to the same play here that they just scored on. But uh, out of the corner, Thompson up top. Far side due to Maine. It's the shot from the normal spot for Thompson. I was about to say after that last goal, they may consider putting him down low a bit further, but. Thompson takes that shot from up up high. A Thompson shooting from the top spot of the offense. <laughs> Nature is healing, as they say. 
Beach is trying to kill off now. What is a minute 25 in this power play? They just got rid of a five on three extended two man advantage as David Anderson will let that shot go late in the shot clock. Both benches claiming they should get possession and it will go to Mimico as Reed Kurtz sends it out to Ferris. Thompson and Lee playing catch. Now working in due to Maine and down to the corner there for Waters. Low shot skips off Johnson and due to Maine couldn't quite get to the loose ball, but Philly Thompson does. Now from Waters, no shot from Thompson. They look off Bakhte into the corner. Bakhte's shot handled by Will Johnston. And the beach is the eight count. It's a little too casual there for beaches that. Yeah, fights him. Quick transition the other way. Leads the goal off the eight count. I, I think you might be able to chalk this one up to just being a little tired. They put a lot of, Beaches put a lot of defense. Three straight penalties. Feels like they've been on defense for the last seven or eight minutes. And a little casual getting the ball off the floor. They had guys open, could have gotten it over the timeline. Ends up going the other way and Mimico gets an easy one. It, that, that's just chalked up to just kind of play too much defense. It's even now, Beaches wants to get back into their flow of things, get back on offense, and stay out of the box here. Be sure to hang with us at the end of the game for the presentation of the Crombie Cup. Nemico defending, having won four of five, 2019. It was won by the Beaches as they come to the net again, and the bouncer gets in behind two. What a run. I think this is David Paterkin going the entire way. Yeah, Paterkin says, we don't need to play offense. I'm just going to take it and go <laughs> score. Why would, I, why would I leave it to the old guys when I could do it myself? Just the second goal of the period for and a big goal too. Stopped Toronto. a little bit of a mini run there from. Ferris is going to go to the box here after. Whoa. This goal, this goal is going to come back, I think. It should because there was a yeah, delayed was penalty, a penalty behind the play, and somehow Mimico puts it in. Kurtz was tied up with somebody in front of the Toronto bench. And Ferris came in and gave him a shot, and then down the floor, Mimico scored. So I, well, I would be very surprised if this counts with 925, but we have seen crazy things. So once again, the Crombie Cup will be presented at the end of this game in memory of Greg Crombie, who is. A big supporter and builder of both of these teams. The sixth year that it will be handed out. Mimico winning the first game 14-12. Reminder to subscribe also to the YouTube channel here. Where all the games will be broadcast throughout the season. There's a playlist. As looks well, like if you've missed anything. Looks like this goal might count. I would love to hear the explanation if that's the case. Still only... Referee pointed towards as if it would be Mimico ball here, but Mimico is still the only team with a guy in the box. 
So not sure what, we'll have to wait for the explanation here. Our mic right next to the bench, which in hindsight might not be the best <laughs> idea, but situations like these, right when you said that, someone did say it was gonna stay out of the box, so. Always a good plan. July 12th is when the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League playoffs will start the first round. Mark your calendars for that. Sounds like Sounds like they are counting the goal unless we get the goal and the penalty. Oh, uh, no, we're behind. A bit of a so. back, yeah, back line. I mean, there's been, <laughs> been 24 goals in a period and a half here, so. Yeah. We're, we're probably still the one that was scored in the seventh minute of that first period. <laughs> it's announced as after the goal, two minutes for roughing. So that is an interesting one, but. After a lengthy penalty kill, the Beaches now get their chance man up. Jacob Hickey, top spot is first, flips it behind his back. The shot comes from a, uh, Collison, excuse me. Matthew Collison up top for Firth. In the corner, Firth will get it back again. Still Firth, Collison. No look for Accioni. On Ball the crease. Really moves here. Hickey, no room to shoot, and then Collison does, and it's handled by Dew. Reed Kurtz running it down the far boards, trying to get past Andy Dalton, who was recognized before the game as being selected for Team Canada, along with Jonathan Peshko and Reed Kurtz. Thomas McCombe, I believe part of that group as well. Players that are associated with these two clubs. Yep. Wishing good luck to those guys as they head out to the World Championships in Ireland. That'll be the week after the playoffs finish, so there will be a break in the schedule to allow those players to go and compete in the under 20 World Championship. Under 20, 22. Uh, 22, I believe. Yeah, sorry. Accordingly, hard check there into Hickey, who immediately crumbles, and that arm is dangling. Late man off the bench, halfway through the shot clock. No look from the far side. The shot does come from Collison. Never got through as it looked like it hit off accordingly. First into the corner. Oh, official thought about it, but it hit off the back of the mesh. Accordingly, has got it. We're still on Mimico's eight count, and right in front of our broadcast position. Cut big pile up here, and that's going to be an eight count against the Mountaineers. That's an interesting one. Quarterly probably would have been better off just not picking that ball up and letting the clock run out. Hidden ball play first, had it the entire time. We're going to try and pick this up in the corner. This is what Ontario Junior Red Lacrosse is all about. This is just awesome creativity and a, an awesome goal here by Beaches. So, so keep your eye down in the corner. So 14 Firth, number 14 is going to pick up the ball, and then number six, Alex uh, Alex Gaston is going to pretend like he's got it. Fools the whole defense, and Firth just throws it right in. Great shot by our crew there to get that all on, on camera as well. Shout out Gary Morrison. Camera operator. So if that play's not whistled in, does Gaston get an assist there? Because I want to give him one. <laughs> Firth has five here in this game of the 12 put up by the Beaches. Hickey is back out there, so gets immediately dropped down to the floor. You pop it back in, and you're back out next possession, I guess. Accioni for Hickey, long range shot. They see it does beat the shot clock, but everyone was gone, so 
Ferris over for Asenza. Beach is back to pressuring the ball. That's Matt Accioni there playing it right over the timeline. And now Mimico's just getting their offense and they got 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Kaskinet bucked up on the run over the top. Finley Thompson and the rebound picked up by Paterk. And remember what he did last time. This time passes for Robinson. And spun Collison all around, but eventually recovered the ball. Firth, hard shot right off the face of Dew, shakes it out, says he's good. No, maybe not. Too many. As Mark Thompson went in to check. No, this is. Mark Thompson wanted to make sure Owen Dew was actually okay after that shot. Pinged him in the mask. Collison. Out to the far boards. No lick return. Intended for Firth. Liam Ferris all over him. Sykes now takes up the cause as Dew handles the shot. Long range from Dew. That hits up in the rafters. Comes down out of play. Unforced error there for Mimico. This is one where your defenders really got to buckle down and get you to stop here. Accordingly took down Anderson on the far side. What a move there. Oh, I thought we were getting one. <laughs> I think that was Raposo. What a move though. Just stops on a dime. A little bit of a swim move and almost gets one to go. The ball nearly cleared. Safety screening and due nicely to his left to take the shot away from Firth. First real time this period. And we've got five minutes left in it that the Beaches have had an extended offensive set. First. Now, now they're going to the power play. Accordingly, twice with a couple big hits off ball. Cameron Got Accioni. Time to run their six on five player. Cameron Accioni going to stand in, however. Under 10 on the shot clock. First. Quick stick, far side goal. I think that's Anderson on the goal there. But really, we've seen so many goals like that today. Again, Firth comes over the top. I, I thought he was shooting that thing for sure. And then a nice pass, and then, you know, it's not easy to score a quick stick from that far out. So credit to Anderson for being ready and getting the ball out fast and, and with some real power on it because you know, he was probably 10, 12 feet away from the goal there and got it to go with a quick stick on a, on a good goalie. Anderson completes his hat trick. First, now with a seven point evening. Again, it was nine in their last time out on the floor. Taguri and Robinson hard at each other on the restraining line, and they call it against Taguri. Tied at 13 here. Four minutes to go in the second period. Baskinette steps up and that shot bounces off the end boards. No over and back. Firth will save it. Oh. Got it through. What a move from Cameron Accioni. Thompson, far side, Moyer. Finley Thompson, low shot, skips wide. He went right to Tavares, however. What a, sh what a shake there by Finley Thompson. Just gets himself wide open. Over the shoulder for Dudamain, and Mimico player was in the crease, however, so we'll give the ball back here to the Beaches. I believe both sides. Excuse me, Beaches took a timeout in the first period. So they'll have one. Mimico will have two to play with down the stretch. And we saw how calling both of them by the second period bit St. Catharines on Wednesday. Here's first. Up top. Hickey had gone right down to the crease. Shot eventually coming from Gaston. And now Sykes up and over center. Carson Moyer. Waters. 
Flip pass from Thompson for Lee. He got filled in just as the ball was getting there. So no shot for Mimica. Oh, they do reset the clock as Thompson touches up. Another one that hits off Johnson. Ball rolls away. Thompson a big. Yeah, Lee might need some extra ice bags or maybe double drumsticks after this one. Goes down again and ball comes quickly to Sykes. Lee will get rewarded. For him. He, he's gotten he, he's gotten beat up pretty good tonight. Mimico forced a turnover and he just goes goes to the front. It's almost like hockey. Goal scorers just go to the front of the net. And good things tend to happen there. Picks up some loose changes and he's so big he's able to get up and over and dunk it over Johnston. Lee's got a hat trick here in this game and a perfect. Description of the crease roll here in junior A where you got to pull the ball out before taking the shot It was definitely in the crease when it was picked up and How about the job from Ferris? He saw the Paterkin movie one too many times in this game As Sykes tried to respond the other way Beach is working back in again Cameron Accioni. A delayed penalty here. So six on five opportunity for Beaches here. It's Firth. Ferris got drilled right through the middle and Ferris is down and hurt. Vicky DeLaga out to check on Liam Ferris. Try and see what happened there. He's matched up with Hickey just inside in front of Firth. Try to twist it up maybe. He grabs the ankle. It looked to me more like it could have been shoulder. Around the back as they went down, but oh. Second look, it looked like Hick Hickey may have stepped on the shoe inadvertently. <laughs> Cubans on our toes here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> right off the crossbar and right into our face over here in the corner. Here's Hickey. Through Collison, now the far side, Accioni, Anderson, and Firth. Accioni for Firth. No shot there as Kurtz continues to bounce around at the top of the defensive set. Off of D, the Beaches won't get it again. Really interesting, the Beaches just doesn't run basically plays ever on the, on the power play. They just rely on their ball movement, but it's so quick and so crisp that it works. Firth for Collison, who cuts through. And the shot handled by Dew, here's Sykes. He leads the league in shorthanded goals. Sykes beats one and cannot beat Johnson. And as soon as the shot was taken, 26.7 on the clock, Toronto Beaches will use their second and final timeout. Very non-traditional what Mimico does, putting some of their better offensive players on their penalty kill. But you mentioned it, Sykes is leading the league in shorthand goals, and that's why. You have a guy getting out of transition. You know, it wasn't even a breakaway, but just a one-on-one, -on -one, but because he happens to be your second leading scorer, one of your best offensive players, it, it's a really good opportunity for Mimico. So if, it, you gotta have the personnel to do it, but you'll see Sykes do it a little bit, you'll see Finley Thompson do it, and credit for the, the Mimico coaching staff for kind of thinking outside the box a little bit and, and putting those guys in, in spots where you might not traditionally see them. I don't think he's the offensive coach, but Troy Cordingly, the number of just kind of clever little things that he's done over the years, multiple time NLL coach of the year, and always seems to end up with just pure athletes on his teams. Guys who can do 
A little bit of everything. I mean, both these teams are really well coached. That, that, that's very clear. And Mimico's got this use of their personnel really well. Firth up top. Still swinging the ball, not waiting for the final seven are the beaches. As they come across to Hickey. Down in the corner, Accioni, quick shot, do. Rebound pulled out. There by Collison. Low shot bounces off the end boards from Anderson. Sykes will try and bomb it down. Johnston was back in the cage as it hit the rafters. And they'll check on the clock, which expired. If they do add time, it'll be it'll be something really short. It'll, well, enough for a hard rip is they put Anderson up top, so perhaps he's their biggest long bomb threat. Ferris is back out there and immediately goes after Hickey. And it was the two of them tied up. They did put one on the clock and I believe trying to go for the quick stick for Hickey, which did not work out as we're 14-13. Mimico, a one goal advantage here in game number two of the annual Crombie Cup Challenge. Mimico did win the first game 14-12, so an exciting third period coming up. Here in about 10 minutes time, we'll have that for you here on the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League's YouTube channel presented by the JBI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario.
Your Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week is brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, visit new.milk.org. As we wait for our officials to come back onto the floor after the timeout. Busy night in the OJLL. As there's three other games, Orangeville leading Peterborough Junior Lakers by a score of 7-6. That game late in the second period. And 10-4, Burlington over Brampton. Right now in the third, about halfway through that, but the big game that has implications on this one, Whitby defeating Oak, Oakville by a score of 13 to eight. Oakville and Whitby now tied each with 11 wins on the season. One of these two teams will be in a three-way tie for first by the end of the night. Nice loose ball there by Andy Dalton to get it going here for, for Beaches. They got about five seconds left on this power play, so one good power play look here. They got it and they score. The one, the one kind of motion that we have seen from them on the power play is getting it down to the crease guy on one side and cutting the opposite shooter through it. So, oh, that was actually, sorry, my apologies. That was just a, a set piece from the start. A, a nice job, a, a great play design there, and a, a nice job by Hickey coming right through on a nice front swing and, and burying it. 28 seconds into the period, and with two seconds left on the power play. Trying to hear assists here because Willem Firth with seven points in this game. That's where Brock Haley finished tonight as well. Three goals and four assists for Haley is the peaches keep rolling and a stick went flying afterwards so i believe a frustrated beat or mountaineers team is going to go back to the box here after this goal i think it's on peaches actually beaches player is going to the box we'll see why here or will we it's the stick of taguri that gets flipped out of the hands it's more pretty offense though from Beaches. Good ball movement and then a beautiful cut by Firth going right through the middle. Goal scorers get to the middle, goal scorers get to the goal and he's done that a lot. So 82 points now for Willem Firth. Puts him four behind. Brock Haley who finishes the night with 86. Atop the OJLL scoring. Race. And we got a lot of a lot of ball left to play tonight. He might catch it tonight. <laughs> I mean the way they're putting him on the board here. Already an eight-point game, and we got 19 to play. And they're like Brock Haley has the lead, 15. I was trying to find the junior A record. And I wasn't sure if it's 18 or 21. If anyone in the YouTube chat knows what it is, you can let us know. Because we may be on watch here with Will Firth. Although with eight in the third, might be a bit much, but Brock Haley, as we said, at 15 earlier in this season. Robinson tried the long bomb transition pass, and Bukta will get it back. Here for Dudame. Stutter step back for Bukta. Johnson going with that. Finley Thompson around his back for Lee. Low shot. Johnson save over to the outside. Thompson. No looks it for Dudamain. The shot there off the end boards. Dudamain will chase his own rebound. Shot clock reset there, I think inadvertently, but they allow it to continue. Dudamain for Lee. And Lee was in the crease upon receiving that pass, so Beaches will get possession. Bit of a sloppy clear there from, from Beaches. They had time, they, could, they probably could have slowed it down a little bit more, but the eight second really on the, on the power plays, especially we've seen it cause a lot of problems for teams. 
Switch at the top of the box here for Beaches. And it's not going to matter as Mimico will put another one in. You know, that, that's, just, that's a tough one for Beaches. You, you score to tie it up, take probably an unnecessary penalty after the goal. Then you, you can't clear it off of a, a nice, you know, you catch a break on the, on the penalty kill, but you can't clear it. And then you, you, get, you give a guy like Thompson so many opportunities, one of them's going to go in. Four on the night for Finley Thompson, two on the power play. The tie the game at 15, if you can believe that. As I said, going to break at the second, the two teams have put 26 up against each other in their first meeting, so why not? Number of fakes and a crease call. Won't count, but that was an impressive individual effort there. Here's Thompson. Taking it outside, light on his feet, and this shot over top of the cage. Goes off the end glass and sliding hard into the end boards and getting up slowly is Matthew Accioni. Will stay on the floor, however. Chris Harlan. Beach got numbers here. Gives it to Accioni. Off the bench, the shot from Anderson. Save made by two. Owen Duke came on in relief of Lane Hershka in the first period. And Sykes runs out of time on the eight count. Beach just thought he hung on to the ball a tick too late and wanted the delayed game call. I think he just had trouble getting it out of the stick as Toronto set up and ball off a defender and up into the roof here. The formerly non-existent roof there at the Drummond Bowl. Cutting through number of chances for Collison on his way to the cage. That one just bounced wide. Collison's such a big body. He's, he's a load to handle when he gets kind of downhill like that. Nice save by Dew there. He's wide open on the goal. Here's Bukta. For Lee, Carson Moyer over a huge crowd. And they picked up by Dooley. Beaches are late in their eight count now, but they do cross center. And it's Jeremy Phoenix Lefebvre. We'll play it back. Anderson off the bench. Goes into the corner for Hickey. Hickey back across the floor and five in the... Clock spin move from Firth and he scores. Give him seven. You know, one thing you, you see with a lot of the great box players is they just don't seem to get checked. And, you know, checking Will at first seems like almost trying to check water. He just slides off it all. Catches it in tight, rolls off like it's no big deal. Three fakes and a berry. Impressive goal there. Sixteen fifteen in favor of the Beaches, who are off to the races again. Ball popped out of the stick of Alex Gaston, and now we'll flip it back towards center. Nifty little recovery after losing the ball for Gaston. He's just setting up again. Hickey, the last one off the bench. Big high step shot from Collison. Rolled through the crease of Dew, who has it now. Dew down floor, I believe, intended for Tavares, but he'll swing the stick at Paterkin and cause the turnover. Moyer, three on one Mimico. For Tavares, he scores! Justin Tavares! You know, when I was a little kid playing lacrosse, my dad used to call those goals the Happy Meal. You, you get, you got, you know, the burger, the fries, and the toy. <laughs> Tavares makes a great play to cause the turnover. They get up in transition, then he ends up finishing off his own play. Look how fired up the team is for the AP to score as well. Four 
from Moyer, the third point of the game for Carson Moyer that we've gotten. Again, by count here, only two mimical runners without points now in this game. Moyer will score. And you can see how fired up the Mountaineers are getting that goal. Yeah, really nice job here at Moyer, just kind of trying to shoot off his defender's hip. We've seen that on when we covered the game on Wednesday and then tonight as well with Moyer where he can't even you can't, you can't even see the holes that he's shooting for when at the moment he's releasing the ball. He's just getting his hands away from his body and extending his stick and hoping that a good thing happens. Jackson Raposo has one already, takes the shot and comes up limp. Heading off to the bench as the Mountaineers will jog it down the far side. Justin Lee. Cross floor, Moyer. Waters. The screen, Robinson out of the way. The shot comes in on Johnson. Bounces to the corner. Lee. Back up for Moyer. Tons of space and lots of time. Down for Lee again. Moyer outside, pick coming, Tavares. Moyer still with it though. Water setting the screen on two men and the shot goes off the post. Dylan Robinson on the run. Robinson. Not sure ever got the shot away. It'll be a holding call. Against Zach Carson Moyer. The difficult turn of events there for Moyer who takes another nice shot. Same thing, just kind of shooting over his defender's hip. And then doesn't go in, hits the pipe a couple inches to the to the left and that probably there or not probably that is a goal and instead the ball goes the other way and he, he ends up being in the penalty box I don't think it was until the tug at the last minute changed the direction of Robinson on his way through it's like Memico's playing a diamond here <laughs> And Matthew Collison will capitalize on that diamond defense. I mean, this should be covered up in a diamond. He's Mimico defenders there. He just kind of steps in and shoots it right through the defender. And again, snappy ball movement and, and nice shooting leads to goals. That's the first goal I've got for Collison. Normally. A huge goal scorer, and you'd think with 16 on the board, 17 now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, a stumble there from Andy Dalton. Still managing to get it away up to center. We are tied at 17. But yeah, first for Collison as Hickey goes right through his screen and picks up the rebound off the shot. Hickey and Collison have both done a great job of getting first open in this game, setting really good hard picks, and it's always coming over the top, which I love. Getting to the middle of the floor, and good things happen there. Here's the Senza. Or slow things up for Bukta. Over for Finley Thompson. Thompson over the top of, excuse me, Kaskinet came down with it and hung on. What a pickup for Tavares as that one looked destined for our face again. Down for Johnson. Who will hang on. Up top. I think Andy Dalton on beaches needs, needs a new pair of shoes. Ran past us and then up to say something in the stands. We'll get a wipe down right in front, and that's where he blew the tire. So 11.50 to play. We're tied at 17. 
<laughs> I heard you get the inside scoop. Yeah, he said his shoe's broken. No, oh, no. He's Not much he can do about that. He zioned it. <laughs> yeah, that was too big. Look at that beach's bench. A reminder that will take you all the way through to the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League playoffs, which get underway on the week of July the 12th. Only a couple weeks left here in the season. Winner of this game will be in a three-way tie for first place with Whitby defeating Oakville tonight, 13 to eight. Both of those teams at 11 and four. Brad Hutchcraft doing a nice job sweeping the floor there and also making friends with everyone out there. No surprise. Did he ask you for the shout out? Because he asked me for one last time we were here. <laughs> no, he didn't ask. Oh, okay. Yeah, was... There you go. He got he got his uh, he got his line he, he got it regardless. Due to Maine for Thompson. In the corner, Cascanet returned for Due to Maine, briefly popped out. And the shot on the run, Boyer. Johnson down. Rebound back to Mimico, however. Fresh 30. Due to Maine. Ball throats, floats, excuse me, through space and eventually finds the big stick of Johnson and quick pit stop behind us. <laughs> Dalton will be returning to the floor shortly. Collison. Here with Hickey. Back across the floor, Accioni. Backs down into the corner. No room, so Collison will ring it off the glass, and that'll be a shot clock violation against the Toronto Beaches. Long pass up towards center, Justin Lee. Jogging it in now. It's felt like a long game. I'm not sure how far we are into it, but nearing the halfway mark of the third as Moyer's aggressive screen gets called. Beach is in transition, the shot in. Dew made the save nicely to stay out of the crease was Justin Lee as well on his fourth trip down the floor. Nice push there for Beaches, though. Due to main, back up top, Castanet. Last one off the bench is Waters. But uh, to Castanet in front, and Johnston just stands his ground. Little Orangeville connection there. Two players formerly of the Northmen, now playing in Mimico. Cross for David Anderson. Quick stick cross floor and the Beaches have another. It's just impressive, impressive ball movement from Beaches. You know, one pass, two pass, three passes for the goal all in this, you know, matter of ball switch, the ball switch sides of the floor three times in four or five seconds. And again, the, the quick stick finishing for both teams tonight has been really impressive, but especially for the beach. Realize I'm here calling the game, but I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna write the recap for <laughs> this one. I'm now 18-7. Might have to ask for a, a bigger word limit this time. <laughs> 18, 18, 17. Beach is on top. If they get the two goal victory from here, that would clinch the Crombie Cup as they would have the total goal advantage if the two teams both end up with a win. As it stands now, though, Mimico will get their fifth in six years. Kurtz was looking at the shot clock and didn't realize he was late in the eight count as Firth turns and fires. That's a big save by Dew there. That would have been a heartbreaking for Mimico. Previous goal was Zach Miller, by the way, is Collison on the assist, and this has been coming for about a period and a half as Mimico will finally pick up their unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Brody Castanet to go serve. 
And a big chance now for Beaches. When they've scored, they've come in about two and three goal spurts. Looks like Bimico's going back to kind of the more traditional box. But a different setup here for Beaches as well. Kurtz and Sykes high for the Mountaineers. Manning from the middle. Got the shot away as it bounces back for Collison. First down low, quick wow. shot there at the post from Alex Gaston, somehow stays out. What a save by Dew there. Ferris, lost control right at the hockey blue line. Winter home of the Mimico Canadians. As Ferris will just keep it along the far boards. Remember Ferris went off earlier. Oh, what a move to shake his man free. Meets a double team now at the side of the crease. And momentum takes him into the blue paint. That would have been pretty if he had got away. But instead, it's Collison. Out for the beaches. Firth will take top spot here. Now it's back to that setup we've seen mostly from beaches with Firth at the top. The high screen from Cameron Accioni went straight through the back of the Mimico defender, so Mountaineers with the ball at 40 seconds left to kill off on that bench minor. Yeah, that was a design play to try to get a, a pick basically on both of the top defenders and let Firth walk in. Nice job by the Mimico defenders there to kind of snuff it out, get through the picks and blow up that play. Carson Moyer all along facing three defenders. This goes high off the end boards. Brought down by the Beaches though in. Quickly two passes to get it into attacking territory. Running out of time, however, only 10 seconds left with the man advantage for Firth and company to work. Firth faked the low shot and then went back high and it bounces straight for Justin Sykes. Sykes, all alone, gets past everyone the shot from Johnston. Cascanet was trailing the play, but Sykes took the shot, rebound. Bounce past Cascanet as well. As now Dooley will slow down and get the Beaches offense back out there. Sykes is a fun player to watch. When he gets out in the open floor, you can really fly. Toronto leads by one. Long range shot. Do lost where the ball was. Thought it was in his feet off the David Anderson shot. As now Thompson. Finley Thompson. His shot doesn't go anywhere as it hit off a leg. No room for a second chance, so Mark Waters will take it in the corner. Waters dancing around. Two to Maine, stirring up trouble in front. Waters for Buckta, saw his defender fall, comes back for Buckta, bouncing in the feet of Johnston. I don't know if he saw it or if he was just trying to keep it away from Lee, who was right on the doorstep. I don't think he saw it. That, that could have been dangerous there. Jacob Hickey to the outside. We'll go for Collison here. Now back for Anderson. Spinning in front, excuse me, that was Miller. And a high stick will be called against Mimico. Giving the Beaches another chance on the power play. Five and a half to go. Beaches up one point. Yeah, almost more importantly at this point too, Beach has another opportunity, but also Mimico for probably for the next two minutes can't get much going offensively. And obviously there's been a ton of goals, but we're getting down to it now. Mimico is going to need at least one more to get, get tied up here. First place on the line, Crombie Cup on the line. You know, whoever wins the game is going to want to take both with them. As a save by two, bounces in the corner. Beaches will extend possession. Hickey, Collison, Firth. Threading the needle down into the corner. Anderson, him and Firth got their signals crossed as this will go for an over and back. Nice play there by Lee, too, to kind of use his length and I think just got in, got in the hands right at the last second and forced that, that errant pass. Finley Thompson. He'll go up top for Bukta. 
Yeah, if you remember, Clavis. Cutter Thompson in the crease. How rude of him to interrupt you. No, no problem. <laughs> you know, he said, he said it on Wednesday too, but that play right there is Tanner, was Tanner's uh, specialty. Passing down to the wing, slipping through his defender. He's seen his older brother do that, you know, a couple hundred times, and clearly he was watching. Mayor of Mimico. Long shot from up top from Collison. Firth will pick up the rebound. 45 seconds left in their power play. Firth, a number of fakes up top, and likes to pass there for Anderson. And now Collison, always going back through Firth. Hickey, Collison, Firth. Looking into the corner, Anderson has it now. Anderson's shot, that hit something on the way through, and Dew stands his ground and makes the save. Across center, Lucas Dudemain will stop just inside center and now. Run away from Matthew Accioni. He's got Carson Moyer in front of him, trying to set a screen. Penalty is over as Dudemain on the run, the bouncer towards the left foot there, Johnston. And look out as the shot from Thompson. Memphis going back to the penalty box here. That's a killer. Caught a piece of, I think, David Paterkin. And we do have a look at it. Keep your eye on the left side of your screen. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Can see right at the tail end of that replay. Lucas Dudamain looks skyward because he understands the point in the game right now, 18-17. I mean, we're used to these two teams playing like seven, six games. Yeah, Mimico really has to shut the door here. Keep your eye on Sykes up top. He'll have that and perhaps other intentions on his mind. Oh yeah, he'll be, he's flying on any shot. Shot there from up top and, and indeed Sykes does head down the floor. Going right with him, however, is Collison. Oh. Sykes got the catch still, and the shot passed everything and up into the screen, so Toronto will get it back. That's a ridiculous pass and catch combo there from Ferris and Sykes. And then he actually had him on the pump fake. Just kind of threw the shot over the goal, but he had he had daylight to look at there. Collison will take top spot. Down in the corner. Everyone moves away from center, allowing Anderson to shoot. Didn't get through, so the shot clock continues to tick down. And there won't be time for Alex Gaston to get a shot away. Looked like the official thought about giving it back to the beaches there, but Mimico with 104 left in their penalty will be able to get out of harm's way. to Maine. From the corner for Bukta. Gasconet. Now Nears can't do it in one possession. Moyer. Shot through Johnston and he's fired up afterwards. Mimico put themselves in this position where they got to take the hard road and, and they pull one out here. We, it's the, the same story with Moyer again. Catches it, throws it right around his defender. He's an, he's an expert almost at shooting around his defender. Does it again and again, and it's so hard for the goalie to pick up. And you see that on plays like that where it hits the goalie and then trickles through. Johnson just didn't see it because it was coming right off his defender's hip. The league leading team in terms of shorthanded goals get their first of the night out of the 18 that they've scored. It ties it up and Moyer's got four on the evening. Still 30 seconds of power play time though for the Beaches. Anderson. Hickey up top. He'll give way to Firth. Now Anderson low shot. The side of the net was there. Shot goes wide and down the floor however and Mimico. 
will get it or will they? Owen Dew thinks it's over and back. And Mark Thompson says that it hit Dew and should have been a reset. That is a massive call in this game with a minute 41 to go. And the beach is on the power play for 15 seconds. Yeah, massive for a few reasons, but the most importantly, it gives Beaches one more look here with the power play. Anderson and Miller playing catch. Now to first, the quick stick coming from Cameron Accioni. Just as the box door opens and the last guy you want to pick it up, Finley Thompson. Beaches want the over and back call. Excuse me, Mountaineers want the over and back. Not gonna get it. Hard shot there from Collison. And a shot clock violation. Meanwhile, Accioni dropped on the near side. This is chaotic, intense action. In other words, exactly what you're looking for out of a junior A game. Shout out Bob Cole. Everything is happening. Everything is happening. As we come down to the final minute. Bakta spins off the crease, turns and scores! What a play here, a little slip pick by Bukta, handles it, has the presence of mind to know that he doesn't have enough angle, works back up the floor, back towards the middle of the floor, and puts it right around the, uh, the left pad there of Johnson. Man, there are playoff vibes. Rob Majolski signaling timeout from the press box. He wants Mimico to call it. They've got two in the bag. Beaches do not have a timeout here down the stretch. I thought they called both of them. Toronto's called timeout. I thought they called two. Yeah, the Mimico coaches agree with you. I'm fairly certain Toronto does not have a timeout here. 19-18 the score as the buck to goal gives a one goal lead. 42 seconds here in the third. Beach is called timeout and I usually write them down as they have it. I've got two on my card. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if the referee's gonna talk about this or, unless or what the, the situation unless is. Unless the first bit, Mark Thompson does go to the right card. Unless that part of that timeout in the first period was Mimico's, but wow. Nineteen eighteen. <laughs> Checking YouTube comments and Pat Gregoire had the under. <laughs> <laughs> Which got blown out about five minutes into this game. Well, if you're enjoying yourself tonight, be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week. We run two of these every week, so if you're subscribed, they'll be right here, and you won't miss any of the action to relive any of it. There's also a playlist here on the channel if you want more this evening. So here we go, Firth. First job, break the eight count, he does that. Gives for Accioni, Firth getting it back. Big screen set in front. Down looking for the quick stick, it comes back. Past Hickey, all over Hickey now. Was Kurtz, what across comes Dew, what a save indeed. Firth with a reset. Back towards the crease again, and Dew back to his left this time. And a crease violation against the Beaches as Hickey was right there. Yeah, Dude's had a hard time with those all night, and then when a moment, at the biggest moment when it matters the most, he Sykes finds Sykes bouncing it down floor to go up and over top of the net, get caught up on the mesh. Firth will have about three seconds left, turning and ripping, and Dude will make the save at the horn. Mimico Mountaineers will get a share of first place, and for the second year in a row, the Crombie Cup. Yeah, two huge saves by Dew there, going pipe to pipe, keep out quick sticks. Was not an easy night for the goaltenders, but just keep fighting, keep fighting, and, and comes up with two big ones when it matters. 
Again, Owen Dew replacing Lane Rushka in the first period of this game. So did not get the start. Will Johnston goes the distance. A 19-18 final as the Beaches led most of that third period. Mimico comes from behind to take the one goal win. And they win the Crombie Cup two games to nothing by a three goal aggregate. The Crombie Cup in memory of Greg Crombie. Again, a builder instrumental in both of these two teams. His family is here in the building as Mimico will get the Crombie Cup once again. Family seems to keep growing every year here, Jonathan. But. The Grey the Grey Cup can keep the Mounties. We got. Oh yeah. We we win the cute contest for trophy bears here with the Crombie Cup, which again goes to Mimico. Crazy night here <laughs> in the bowl, Jonathan. Yeah, you mentioned a, play, a playoff type atmosphere. Well. This might be a matchup we see again in the playoffs. And what a treat that would be. You know, that was a, a slugfest. Those teams left everything they had on the floor. So hard, so physical, so fast. So much, so much skill on display for both teams. Some really beautiful goals tonight. If that is a matchup that we see down the road, that'll be a great series. Again, Whitby beating Oakville tonight. They move to 11 and four, as do the Oakville Buzz. 11 and two, the record now for Mimico who has a couple games in hand, 10 and four for the Beaches, who will be effectively in second place. Um, final reminder to subscribe to this channel. What a game tonight. And so much more of that as we take you down the stretch ahead of the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League playoffs. On behalf of our director, Kennedy Diet, our producer, Gary Morrison, my partner, Jonathan Donville, the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League and the JVI Sports Network. I'm Matthew Carrick. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time.